Have you heard? Two appointment, 3D printed, digital dentures. Let's talk about it. Today's video is going to focus on our 3D printed digital products. It's been over two years now since Utica Dental Lab has invested in a carbon 3D printer. The technology has completely revamped our workflow process for our full dentures, night guards, and our modeling. The most influential change, however, has come to the full denture lineup. What was once a laborious and variable process has now become simplified and streamlined. Gone are the days of the fit and quality of your denture being based on the skill and experience of your lab tech. Now with a CAD CAM approach, fit and accuracy are practically guaranteed. However, this process still does require some traditional denture techniques in order to ensure a quality prosthesis. The best way to understand the differences between traditional dentures and digital dentures is to analyze them side by side. First and foremost, you're going to need a good impression. That part hasn't changed in nearly a century, although the method by which you get that impression may have. Our current recommendation to our clients is that they submit a physical traditional impression. It is possible to take a intraoral scan of an edentulous arch with a intraoral scanner but the process is much more difficult than, say, a tooth prepped for a crown or a bridge. We can and do use 3D scans of edentulous arches to build models for dentures. However, the quality of the scan is highly dependent on the type of scanner and the skill of the technician doing the scanning. Scan quality depends on the scanner's ability to emit and collect a light emitted through a pinhole. Any reflective surface will make it difficult for your scanner to read. And the most common culprit for reflective surfaces is saliva. It is considerably easier to prep and dry a tooth than it is to prep and dry for an edentulous scan. Again, it's not impossible to take an adequate scan with an intraoral scanner, but the probability of our scanning software Having a reading error for those scans isn't zero either. If you'd like some more information on the current state of intraoral scanners and some of the frustrations involved with them, uh, I'd recommend the first video in this series. I'll put a link right there. A general rule of thumb is that today's scanners aren't quite ready to take edentulous scans yet, but it is getting very close. In either case, once the impression is taken, the next step is to make a model. For both traditional and digital dentures, our lab techs will pour a good old fashioned stone model. Uh, for traditional dentures, this model is going to be used to uh, fit bite blocks on. And for the digital process, they will be scanned using our pre-shape benchtop scanner. The model of the impressions is the first set of information required in making a good prosthesis. The next step in the process is to acquire the vertical dimension and centric relation in an articulated model. Regardless as to whether you opt for traditional dentures or digital dentures, uh, we will still need to use bite blocks or wax rims uh, in order to gain that vertical dimension. Once we receive your articulated bite blocks for the digital models, we will go ahead and scan those in and begin designing your denture. Uh, traditionally speaking, we'll begin the wax up process, setting teeth and building a wax try-in. Digitally speaking, we will send a monolithic tooth colored try-in uh, for you to test for fit and phonetics and functionality. Uh, it's a functional, functional model. Uh, if the patient wanted, uh, they could take that denture home with them and use it uh, while waiting for the final prosthesis. The patient will also get an idea of uh, tooth shade and tooth shape uh, so the aesthetics can kind of be determined a little bit better with that. Uh, traditionally, we'll give you a wax model with wax up teeth. Uh, you can shape it as you, as you see fit. 
Uh, of course, wax will heat up in the mouth and, and disfigure, uh, but it's a process that's worked, you know, for a hundred years. So, once the try-ins are returned with uh, with instruction for adjustments for the digital denture, we will simply scan in those adjustments. Usually, our clients with digital dentures will will just make the adjustments directly to the try-in, uh, shaping it or trimming it, uh, however they see fit, and uh, we'll scan that right in and we'll we'll make those changes directly to the final prosthesis. Uh, for a traditional denture, our lab tech will get the, back, the wax try-in back and move on to the casting process so that our dentures can be made via press pack with Lucitone 199 acrylic. In either scenario, uh, four visits is the typical workflow for the majority of our clients. Five steps if you opt for custom trays for your first impression. It's not impossible to perform two visit denture fittings. About five years ago, we were the preferred lab of choice for Horaeus Kalzer regarding their Pala digital dentures. Pala digital dentures have since been discontinued for a myriad of reasons, but the initial impression system is still a viable option. The Pala digital denture impression system is a viable option for obtaining all of the requisite uh, impression information for your denture, including vertical dimension and centric relation. The impression trays are even still available on their website to purchase today. The method for achieving accurate measurements using this system uh, is a bit time consuming compared to uh, your typical traditional methods. Uh, usually clients would report it taking well over an hour to get the impressions. Uh, Pala themselves recommend uh, clearing an hour's worth of chair time in order to get the full impressions and measurements. But it is possible. If you could theoretically get a first impression with all the information gained from uh, bite blocks or wax rims, theoretically you could have a final prosthesis made in only two visits. Uh, now there's some real drawbacks involved with that. The most obvious being the total and complete reliance on your initial impression and the measurements you take uh, in order to create the prosthesis. Uh, also, uh, with only two visits, you won't be able to have a try-in. And as we know, the most common reason for remakes or resets uh, are the patients uh, disagreeing with the aesthetics, whether that be tooth color or tooth shape or some other aesthetic, some other aesthetic metric uh, that they just didn't quite like. So try-ins are very useful when trying to fit a denture for the first time. But again, it's possible. Can't do it. Not with full dentures with edentulous patients. Uh, digital scans in order to gain uh, the vertical dimension. Uh, you need teeth as a reference point. Uh, in any case with a, with a digital scan, you're still going to need uh, wax rims uh, in order to, to gain your vertical and centric relation. It's possible to scan your wax rims and send a scan to, to the dental lab. Uh, that could shave off a few days for shipping. That's more or less one of the steps in the process in our lab. But it's important to consider the method of which you're taking your scans. We use a three-shape E4 benchtop scanner, and that was specifically made to take extra oral scans. Uh, I've heard rumors of dentists who are using their intraoral scanner uh, externally as a method of sending in digital scans to reduce uh, chair time or turnaround time with shipping. Uh, is that possible? Technically, yeah, I suppose it would be possible to get an image using an intraoral scanner uh, externally in a 360, 360 degree type fashion. Uh, is that advisable? That's really determined by your approach to dentistry and your priorities for your practice. Uh, Utica Dental Lab guarantees two day turnaround time for shipping in the continental United States. Is it worth it to, to shave a few days off of the shipping turnaround times and some extra chair time? Maybe it is. That's for you to decide. Really well. Really, really favorably. Identically even. We use Lucitone 199 acrylic for traditional denture base and we use Lucitone 3D digital denture resin for 
the digital denture base. Both are made by the same supplier. Uh, here's a chart side by side of how they compare. Very, very similar in terms of flexural strength. We also had a small trial period a couple years ago before we launched the product. A uh, handful, five or six of our uh, longer standing clients uh, received both, both prostheses side by side. Uh, they took a look at them. Uh, they couldn't tell the difference. They really, they really couldn't uh, determine a difference between the two. As far as patient fit goes, we got some feedback saying uh, some of the patients seem to prefer the digital denture cases. I, I suspect that's highly subjective, but uh, nonetheless, it was a bit of a trend. Other areas where they, where they do differ a bit are the denture teeth. The traditional dentures are made with uh, Arctic teeth by Kulzer, those are card teeth, and digital denture teeth are 3D printed using DEMA print denture teeth resin that's made by Kulzer. Uh, the biggest advantage is the design process. Uh, really, it's, it's an in-lab advantage uh, more than anything. The process is less laborious. It takes less time to make a digital denture. The workflow is just less time consuming. It allows our lab techs to focus on more demanding cases. Uh, and in turn, we pass those savings on to you. We have three different options when it comes to our full denture solutions. The 3D printed digital dentures are the most favorably priced out of all of them. We hope to transition the majority of our clients to digital dentures uh, within the next couple of years. And really we expect that within two or three years for digital dentures to far outweigh traditional dentures in, term of, in terms of volume. Another added benefit is uh, record storage. We keep a, a digital file of all of the cases uh, at all times. It's very easy to replace a denture uh, should that need ever arise. Uh, we just look it up in the computer and print out another one and you could have it as soon as we can get it to you. From a turnaround standpoint, we're still operating in the same sort of window as traditional dentures. Uh, you know, as I mentioned before, four, four visits for the patient, usually between three to five days per each step. But as the technology continues to improve, in particular intraoral scanning technology, I wouldn't be shocked if we arrive at a point where we have just scan and print models uh, ready to go. We use our carbon 3D printer for modeling and for custom trays, but by far the most common use is dentures and night guards and bite splints. Utica Dental Lab offers a full line of key splint 3D printed guards and retainers. And the process for these are really simple. Either we take your full intraoral scan, full arch scan, and load that into the computer to build a model of a retainer, or we scan in your traditional impression, your traditional stone model, and use that to build the retainer. Uh, from there, we print and polish and finish. And that's it, it's really that easy. As scanning and 3D printing technology continues to improve, I expect most, if not all, of our products will have a full digital workflow. But an item that's uh, soon to be released that we're very excited about is 3D printed flexible partial resin. Uh, in September 2021, Carbon released a press release that stated it intended to create a uh, 3D printed resin. That's hit a few snags from what we understand as they uh, work to acquire the necessary regulatory approvals, uh, but we don't expect that delay to last long. Uh, we fully expect that by the end of the year, we'll have a new digital workflow for our flexible partials. And as always, Utica Dental Lab is on the forefront of digital technology. We pride ourselves in our ability to, to sniff out the products that we think are going to be beneficial for you. It's one of our core beliefs as a business uh, to continue to innovate, to con continue to push forward, and to continue to provide for you uh, the same consistent processing and quality products uh, that we've been delivering for over 60 years. So thanks for watching. Uh, I really hope that you found that information useful. 
If you did, uh, go ahead and give us a thumbs up, like and subscribe. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'll be back shortly with the next video in this series, a look at our DMLS 3D metal printer. That's another relatively new machine uh, that we invested in about two years ago as well. Uh, and it's completely, completely changed our process for metal partials. Uh, I'm excited to bring that information to you, but until then, uh, this is so long for now.